I'm going to do a few problems from the Math 3 Unit 2 Worksheet 6 and I'm going to start off with number 4. Um, here we are looking at the topic of factoring the sum and the difference of two cubes and number 4 is a difference of two cubes. It needs to be recognized as so. Uh, first of all, 64a cubed is the same thing as 4a to the third power because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64 and a times a times a is a cubed minus 124r cubed is the same thing as 5r the quantity cubed because um, 5 times 5 times 5 is 125 and r to the third power is r to the third power so here we have a difference of two perfect cubes when you have this case, uh, you can factor it. And uh, when we factor it, we use a shortcut. We use a, a pattern. Um, so the first factor is going to be the cube root of your first term, which is 4a, minus the cube root of the second part, which is 5r. So that's the easy factor. The next factor will be a trinomial, and the, the pattern we use to get this is we take that first term, the 4a, and square it. So 4a squared would be 16a squared plus, then you take the first term times the last term, 4a times 5r, which would be 20ar, plus and you take the last term and square it, and you get 25r squared. Um, in terms of signs, sometimes to help you remember, we use the uh, we use soap. So where where we use here, there's a minus sign because it's the same sign as what we started with. Uh, the next sign is O for opposite, and then the last sign. AP for always positive. Uh, if that helps you remember this pattern, you can use that. So we'll try that again on number six. Uh, first of all, it's a sum, and the f we do not have a sum of two perfect cubes here. So we cannot use that because three is not a perfect cube, and um, y to the fourth, you know, is not a perfect cube, y is not a perfect cube, and so on. Um, so we try a different kind of factoring. Can we factor out a greatest common factor? We could divide both terms by 3y and we're left with 27y to the third plus 1. And now 20, uh, so 3y is out in front. 27y cubed is 3y to the third power plus 1 is the same thing as 1 to the third power. And so you see inside the brackets I have a sum of two perfect cubes which can be factored. So 3y um, just carries down and then our first factor for the, the sum of two cubes is going to be 3y plus 1. And then to create the trinomial we square the 3y and you get 9y squared minus, opposite sign, um, first times the last, which is 3y, because so 3y times 1 is 3y, and then plus, always positive, 1 times 1 is 1. And now it's fully factored. You can always check if you're doing this right by taking the time and multiplying this back out and seeing if you end back at 81y to the fourth plus 3y. For number 9, I want to do 9 next. Um, we want to write it in factored form, then determine the real and imaginary solutions. So here it's a sum of two perfect cubes. The first one is 2x to the third power plus 1 to the third power is equal to 0. 
And so we're going to factor the sum of two cubes to 2x plus 1. Same sign. And then square the 2x and you get 4x squared minus opposite sign as the plus. Um, and then 2x times 1, which is 2x, and then always positive for the last term, 1 squared is still 1, equals 0. And we can use the zero product property. We take each factor, set it equal to 0, and the first one we solve for x by subtracting 1 and then dividing by 2. The second one, if you try to factor it, try to find two numbers that multiply to 4, add to negative 2, it doesn't work out. And so we have to use the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a where 4 is the a, negative 2 is b, and positive 1 is c. So that would be negative negative 2 plus or minus the square root, negative 2 squared minus 4 times 4 times 1, all over 2 times 4. which is 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus uh, 16 over 8. Two plus or minus negative or square root of negative 12 over 8. And we can simplify that root to 2 plus or minus i, well, not i only, but 12, let's do a little scratch work here, uh, square root of 12 or is the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. The square root of 4 is 2, so 2 root 3, but then we, if we had a negative square root of 12, uh, we have the i in between the 2 and the root. So this would be 2 plus or minus 2i square root of 3 over 8. And then the last step is you look at three spots, the ones I'm highlighting, and ask yourself, can you divide all of those by something? And we can. We can divide them all by 2. So we get 1 plus or minus 1i root 3 all over 4. So, uh, factored form was the 2x plus 1 times 4x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. Real solutions would be x equals negative 1 half. Imaginary solutions we got two of them. One would be 1 plus i root 3 over 4. And the other one would be 1 minus i root 3 over 4. Whenever you have that plus or minus, you really have two different solutions. Number 11, we're going to try the same thing. It's equal to zero if you want. You can just move it, uh, switch the equation around. So we're 250 x to the fourth minus 54 x is equal to zero. And we can factor out at least a two x. And I'm left with 125 x to the third minus 27 equals zero. Notice 125 is 5 cubed, so this is 5x to the third minus 3 to the third. So we can factor that further. 
to 2x times 5x minus 3 times 5x times 5x is 25x squared. Opposite sign would be a plus sign. 5x times 3 is 15x. And always positive, 3 times 3 is 9 equals 0. So that would be factored form. Real solutions, well, to get any solutions, we need to take our factors and set them each equal to 0. So 2x is equal to 0, that's one factor. 5x minus 3 equal to 0, that's the second factor. And 25x squared plus 15x plus 9 equal to 0, that's the third factor. First equation gives us x is 0 when we divide by 2. Second equation gives us 5x is 3, so x is 3 fifths. That's my second uh, solution. So those are the two real solutions, 0 and 3 fifths. And um, the last one's going to give us imaginary solutions because First of all, you try to factor it, it's not going to work out. Uh, you use the quadratic formula, you're going to end up with a negative underneath the square root sign when this happens. So let's, let's try that out. Uh, 25 is A, 15 is B, and 9 is C for the quadratic formula. So we have x equals negative B, so negative 15, plus or minus the square root of B squared, so 15 squared, minus 4 times A, times c all over 2 times a. So it's negative 15 plus or minus the square root of uh, 225 minus 9 times 4 times 25. So 4 times 25 is 100, so that's 900 all over 50. Um, which is negative 15 plus or minus the square root 225 minus 900 is 675. Negative 675 over 50. And then we need to work on that negative, that 675. So 675 uh, is 25 times 27. And 25 is a perfect square. 27 is 9 times 3. So here we end up with the square root of 675 is the square root of 25 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 3, which is 5 times 3 times the square root of 3, or 15 square root of 3. And um, if it were negative 675, it would be, uh, you'd have the i, so 15 i root 3. So this simplifies further to negative 15 plus or minus 15 i root 3 over 50. Look at the negative 15, the 15, and the 50. Ask yourself, can you divide each of those further? And we can, and so we end up with, we divide them all by 5, we get negative 5 plus or minus 5i root 3 over 10. And actually we could do, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't do it correctly. If we divide 15 by 5, it should not be 5, it should be 3. So remember that's that plus or minus gives us two different imaginary solutions. One with the plus sign, one with the minus sign. And that's it for worksheet six.